We are recording this meeting. I'm so thrilled to um, to be here with all of you and to welcome you to the early show. And at the, right now I'm gonna introduce my, my co-host, Winnie Zhang, and our special guests, Lee Miller and Stephanie Pierce. And I'm gonna let them tell you a little bit about themselves. Hey everyone, my name's Winnie. Uh, I work at Spark as the Open Education Ambassador and uh, I'm happy to also be on the conference team. Hi, I'm Lee Miller. I'm with Barton Community College as the Director of Innovation and Compliance. And I'm also a part of, of the Steering Committee. Hi, I'm Stephanie Pierce. I am a librarian at the University of Arkansas and I'm on the Future of Open Ed Committee. And I also organize the Open Ed Southern Symposium. Welcome, we're so glad to have you here with us, Stephanie and Lee. Um, today, we're going to um, chat a little bit about um, our day yesterday. We're going to talk a little bit about some work, virtual life balance, and attending a virtual conference. Um, and we have a, a couple of other topics. We're going to talk a little bit about reflective leadership. Um, but first, we are going to start with our show and tell. So everybody brought a mug today to show. So we're gonna put our mugs up for you to see. And then we're gonna take turns and tell you a little bit why we picked these mugs. So I don't know if you can see mine clearly. Um, it has quotes from Shakespeare. I have two Shakespearean mugs. I have one with Shakespearean insults, which I couldn't locate this morning. So I had to go with the, um, these are quotes about love from Shakespeare. So here's one, love is a smoke raised with the fume of sighs. So um, I'm, an, I'm an English major, so this is my nod to all you comp and lit faculty and lovers out there. What did you bring today, Winnie? I have my typical dog mug. So I am a dog mom of two, and this actually looks exactly like my dog, my second dog that I, uh, um, I, got after I got this mug. So this mug did some, did some financial damage to me. And then uh, this is what it says on the back. I work hard so my dog can have a better life. I'm one of those like annoying dog people. So this is the mug I bought for show and tell. <laughs> That's perfect. And I should just also say there's a fantastic um, open ed pets channel on discord that everybody should go check out. That's right. Keeps my spirits high. <laughs> Lee, what mug did you bring? So I brought this one. And to be honest, this is my only fun mug. To, I mean, just transparency. But I brought this one um, and somebody gave it to me because they thought it looked like me with a mustache. And so I was like, OK, if you say so. So there we go. Oh, <laughs> it was funny. How about you, Stephanie? So I brought my NASA mug. Um, it's actually for NASA Ames. I brought it because I, I used to actually intern there in their history office. So uh, people don't ever, they're like, oh, cool, NASA mug. And they think it's always from Houston. And I'm always like, no, it's the one in California where Google lands their jets. So I got to see all those rich people take off all the time. <laughs> And Stephanie, do you have an um, affinity for science? Uh, so no, actually I was a history major and an anthropology minor. Um, but when I got into librarianship, they were like, hey, do you want to take the sciences on? Um, actually, you don't really get a choice. So you're going to start being a science librarian. And so it kind of went that way. But I actually really love it now. I, I can understand those people. And I help them like translate <laughs> when they're like, get too in the weeds. I'm like, whoa, whoa, let's go to some science communication. Let's break it down. Help me understand what you're trying to say. It sounds like you provide an excellent service. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's some need it, some don't, you know. So my job is just to help those that need like a little bit of help of explaining what it is that they're wanting to say or find. Because sometimes they're just like, give me like the, uh, 
chemistry equation or chemistry breakdown. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. Like, I need you, I can pick out silver and I can pick out graphene, but I need you to know what the other aspects are. So it, it really is interesting though. Well, I just want to also remind you all that you can get a fantastic, I'm still working on this whole virtual background camera thing. Um, but I hope you can see my open education conference mug with the open ed uh, graphic that we are so proud of. Um, and you too can get your own open ed swag if you visit the online store. So if you're missing all of that, it's out there for you. Um, so, so be sure to, to, to check out the website and, and, and look at, look and see. There's some great items too for your pets. So. So yeah, I, I saw the pet hoodie and I was like, I am, I've got to get that. Um, yeah, so we have some really exciting kind of social programming today uh, to announce. And we have a tea time with Mahabali and Mia Zamora. That's right after the keynote. So right after the keynote, you're going to be able to talk or plenary session, you're going to be able to talk with them uh, in the tea time. And then there's a V connecting at tea time at 1.30. Um, so again, using V connecting and then we have Tuesday Tea Time Trivia. So you're supposed to come play and you can actually win a prize in trivia uh, and it'll be open at trivia. And then I'm super excited. One of our uh, steering team members, Tiffany, is going to be uh, doing Taco Tuesday. So taking a recipe that one of the um, conference attendees put in the recipes Discord channel uh, taking one of those taco recipes and making it live tonight from 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. All of those times were Eastern. So if you want to participate, you will have to join Discord. So I will actually post the link to join here, down here. And uh, you have to join Discord. Tiffany will be going live on Discord. And I believe Tiffany's here if you want to talk a little bit about it, Tiffany. Um, we'll actually have a Zoom room too, and it's in Sketch. Um, oh, great. Yeah, so, but uh, yeah, I mean, share your, share your taco recipes, your favorite taco recipes, and like the ones that you think would be the most fun to watch me make. Um, and the one with the most likes or reactions is the one that's going to get made tonight. Um, so I'm having mystery taco night tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And, and, you know, another thing is if you're not feeling social today, which is totally fine, uh, we have a bunch of lightning talks to visit. So we have some view anytime uh, sessions, about probably about a hundred or so in there that you can view. All of them are about 10 minutes or so. So uh, plenty of content for you to go through and amazing content, might I add. Uh, I will go ahead and post a link to that in the chat as well. Well, I noticed, Winnie, that, that you said shed, shed, sketch. So, oh, yeah. So, like, this has been one of the controversies of the conference. So, I'd like everybody to weigh in. Is it sketch? Is it shed? Is it shed? So, like, what, how do we pronounce this? Oh, yeah. There, there was a whole Twitter poll and everything. Personally, I, I go sketch, but this is like the lip guide, light guide debate in the library world, so. <laughs> what are some of the other controversies, Wendy? There was a Cheeto controversy. Okay, there was this um, uh, conversation. Oh, look, we got some sketch for sure. Sketch, and then shedge. Oh, we have a shedge. Yeah, so. No Cheeto controversy. People were arguing about puffy or crunchy, and they were saying crunchy. which, which. Oh, see, crunch. I go puffy. I have to do puffy, but I don't do regular puffy. I do spicy puffy, which is different. Mm. Yeah, it has to be the spicy version. The jalapeno cheddar crunchy is good, but there's nothing that beats just a regular crunchy Cheeto. Mm. Except the puffy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an equal opportunity Cheeto eater. I will eat all the Cheetos. I don't, yeah, we got I don't like the spicy ones as much, but. Mm. The best use for puffy Cheetos is for starting fires. Like if you're ever stuck camping and you need to start a fire and you have Cheetos, light them up. They're the best kindling you'll ever find. 
crunchy Cheetos are for eating. Puffy Cheetos are for starting fires. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> That's an excellent survival tip, David. <laughs> Make sure you have Cheetos when you're out hiking, just in case. <laughs> yeah. So, so Stephanie, do you want to talk to us a little bit about how you're managing attending a virtual conference and how you're doing? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Amy. Um, so I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I've been attending quite a few uh, virtual webinars, virtual conferences since, you know, March when everything just kind of went crazy on us. Um, and I always kind of find it hard to, and maybe it's just me because I'm like a Virgo and love to be in control of everything, but kind of hard of balancing you know, being physically and mentally um, in tune to like the virtual conferences and webinars versus being distracted by my email and feeling like I need to just answer people like immediately because you don't want anybody to wait or anything like that. So this week, and I was telling uh, Amy and Lee and Winnie earlier that I think, you know, yesterday I did not put an out of office on my email, but I think for the rest of the week, so I can be, you know, just completely present in open ed because it is, you know, one of my favorite conferences to attend. I'm just gonna put that out office on and just act as if I was in Denver, like we originally thought maybe we'd be. Um, but yeah, so it's been interesting. And again, I've been tackling this for like months now. And I think that, you know, Winnie brought up also a good point that people know where you're at. We're not like just, out like at a coffee shop working or another office, we're at home. So they know we are a like in a one specific spot and they're like, why wouldn't you be answering? So I think it's important, you know, to act as if you are actually at a physical conference um, or in person face-to-face -face on this because it's just so easy to miss all the great content that we have on our conference. If you're just like, oh, okay, let me go check my email. because. If you're like me, it's easy to check one email and then it goes to the other and you spend 15 minutes uh, checking email and you're like, oh, I just missed that session that I really wanted to go to. What are others' thoughts on this? And you know, how are, how are others handling this? Are you an out of office person, whether you're in face-to-face -face or virtual, or do you struggle with uh, managing that aspect like I do? Let's see. Struggling, I see email beckons, email forces my hand, Jeff, yep. Out of office, because, yep, I see others are definitely, oh. hey, Carrie. <laughs> Carrie and I were in the uh, open ed, um, oh my gosh, OER Leadership Fellowship Program from Spark. My brain is not working this morning, coffee is stuff, which leads in now too, but I'm glad you requested that time. Lee, how about you? Do you, do you like venture off to the kitchen and, and get lost in your kitchen sometime? I try really hard not to. <laughs> By the time I come back, I will realize I would have really missed the session I would have wanted. <laughs> because I forgot, you know, what time it was and stuff. And that's the thing for me is, is trying to keep track of schedules because you go from one to the next to the next and all of a sudden, you know, it's four o'clock, it's five o'clock, whatever it is. And um, I was so thankful. I think it was um, Haley that I was like, she sent out a text, remember to eat. So I remind, remind everybody because there's not a ton of space in between, remember to eat, because <laughs> that will help. Well, and the good thing is that we are going to post the links to the, these are, the sessions are recorded. We're going to post the links. We're getting those up as quickly as we can. Um, and our plan is to um, have a record of everything and upload it to a YouTube platform. So eventually it will be out there accessible. And if you do miss the first 15 minutes, you can go back and, and have a chance to, to recapture that session and view that session. So that is one advantage of um, running this conference in a virtual setting. So, so Lee, do you want to talk to us a little bit? Um, Lee and I 
were chatting the other day about reflective leadership. And I just thought this was such a um, wonderful concept. So um, I would love to hear more about it, Lee. Yeah, so um, this actually came up with uh, a conversation that one of, um, one of our deans presented. I just thought that would be something kind of a good point to, to make here and just remind people because we are so busy and the conference is so full with so much content. I think in one of the, the chat pieces, somebody you know said there's an option of being overloaded, right? But you still wanna be able to take as much as you can from the conference. And then when you go back, you have stuff to, re to you know, uh, you know, recharge your memory in terms of what happened and the takeaways that you want to keep and be able to do something with. So um, one of the things in terms of just um, taking time to reflect um, specifically, so I'm a big note taker, so I usually take notes throughout sessions, but then after the session, um, especially if, if you like just to focus on what you're, what you're doing, uh, take a moment either after the session or at the end of the day uh, to do any of the, the following just in terms of, of what you may like. Uh, so, you know, what ideas were you drawn to specifically? Um, why do you think you were drawn to that idea? And then, you know, is there any way that you could turn that idea into action? Is there any application in terms of what you could do for that? Um, summarizing your thoughts um, and takeaways. Um, reflect on what happened um, in that specific presentation. And then are there future actions that you could do with that or applications? Are there new, um, you, new people you wanna reach out? Um, most of the or sessions I've been in, they are almost always ending. And even some of the lightning rounds that, that I've watched, they, they say, you know, feel free to reach out to them after the session or after the conference. Uh, so if that's something you're really interested in, you know, is that something you wanna do later? Um, and make that, make that notes like, you know, follow up with this person and write down that presenter's name and stuff like that. Um, highlight strengths and or weaknesses within their presentation. Um, not necessarily so much to share for, for them because you're coming from a different perspective, but um, that way you kind of have a place of, of remembering where your thoughts are when you're in that session. And then also where, um, where can you add to the conversation, right? Where would be something that you can go? Because open ed is still you know, growing by leaps and bounds so fast. Uh, same things with positive and negatives, just in terms of, of your perspective. Um, and then why do you think those are? You know, um, one thing I always recommend doing or that I try to do is perspective shift. So once you do that for yourself, you know, where would somebody else see that? And when they say, see your strengths as what you put down strengths as, you know, is there a weakness there from somebody else's perspective? Um, just kind of as a, as a last note, um, I truly believe that the, the sharing of ideas and working across disciplinary lines um, and having meaningful, productive conversations can lead to innovation and innovation can lead to change. So kind of take note of where those ideas are that you have from these different sessions and where can that be you know, innovative work as we keep moving forward. What are your guys' thoughts on, on what do you guys do during sessions or after sessions? Um, how do you guys kind of make sure that you can take some stuff away after you've gone to a session or even a big conference like this. One thing that um, I've been doing is um, I reached out to everybody from my institution who's coming to the conference and we got one big Google Drive for all of us to take our notes. And we just kind of, each one of us has our own folder in it. And at the end of every day, we can go and check out anybody else's points and do that kind of guided reflection you're talking about on our own stuff, but also if there's a session that we really wanted to go to that we couldn't make it, we have that um, that option if somebody else went to that. So that way we can kind of pool our resources and it's it's like we almost have that uh, that Harry Potter time turner where we can make it to the two sessions at once. Nice, that's a, that's a great idea. Yeah, time turner. We all need a time turner. <laughs> we do. Winnie, you were talking about an exercise that you were participating in. Do you want to chat a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, so we have a different perspective each day uh, writing a member of our communications team. We kind of just sat down and, and said, oh, we want to do some reaction blogs for each day. And then we realized that every single person in the communications team had a completely different perspective. We had new attendee, faculty, librarian, we had international perspective, we had student perspective. 
So we decided to uh, hammer out which day would be what. And each day there's a reflection piece written by one member of the communications team that talks about um, you know, their experiences in the conference, what they learned, what sessions they attended, what sessions they wanna go back and watch. So uh, you know, if you're looking for that reflective piece, they have um, some reflections from the conference on the website, on the news section, and we send it out in the morning emails as well. So people can access and, and, and read your blog. That's wonderful. Um, we have about four minutes left before we need to send you all off to the plenary session. Um, I think we have some time to, to hear from a, a couple of community members. Uh, if anybody wants to chime in on any of the topics um, that we've been talking about, make some space here. If you want to unmute and, and join in the conversation. I also really love the synergy. Um, if you attended Maha's um, Mad Tea yesterday, um, it was a series of reflective questions. And it was just, it's wonderful to, to have, you know, these, these connections, right, that um, people were, it was kind of, it was kind of speed networking, but with a twist where, where we were really um, reflecting and, and sharing um, these, these moments and um, it was lovely. And then to have the connection to, to all of, um, to what Lee was talking about, to, to, to Winnie's experience on, on the communications team. Um, so it's, it's, it's really fantastic to see the, the synergy and the connections. Okay, so we have about three minutes. Um, any anybody in the anybody out there? We we were talking. Um, I don't know if y'all have seen this meme about um, teaching online that it's like a seance. Have you seen this? So when you're joining your room, is anybody out there? Lee, Lee, are you joining us today? Give us a sign. Here. <laughs> That's funny. That has to be part of why I went, face, went back to face-to-face -to -face as soon as I could. <laughs> I really couldn't stand the, I got ghosted by students. I know I got ghosted by students. Name plates up, but they're not there. Doug, Doug, do you need something? Class has ended. Doug. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I've had the exact opposite too, though, where I've been like in a class and gotten ghosted by the professor. Like we have like 15 students sitting there and then all of a sudden just like, nothing it's the weirdest thing students are never complaining about it though never complaining about 15 minutes and <laughs> the uh, the main thing that hosts all of our classes at my institution crashed the first day of school and i actually got an email from one or two students saying thank you for the crash it was really nice it made me have an extra day of summer um and that was one of the most positive emails i've ever received yeah, I used to remember when we were do when, when when I was in college, there would be students when the professor was late who'd just be staring at the clock, waiting for the fifteen minute mark. They're like, "All right, fifteen minutes, I'm out." <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because from the professor's side, we're, we're we're like, "That's a myth. That's a myth. There's no fifteen minute rule, <laughs> and you better be there if I'm fifteen minutes late." <laughs> Well, we have just one minute to wrap this up. And so I do wanna take a minute to thank all of you for being here today with us. Um, we love coming on the early show. I know this is only day two, but it's, it's something I've been looking forward to through all the planning. Um, so we'll be here tomorrow. We'll be here tomorrow bright and early at um, 8.30 a.m. Central, 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. And I hope that you'll all join us for the plenary session starting in six minutes. And don't forget to catch Emily Reagan and Haley Bob for the late show this afternoon. Um, they use Mentimeter to have some audience participation and it's a great opportunity to reflect back on your day and to share the wonderful things that, that you experienced. And we're, we really wanna hear from you. So, Thank you everyone for being here. We're gonna end recording and we're gonna send you off to the plenary. Thank you everyone.